Well, hi there, everyone. Welcome to another Cardwell's Cauldrons here at Geektopia Island. I'm Cardwell. And I'm Kevin. And today, of course, we have a fun little deck for you. But before we get into it, we're going to remind you that we do have a Patreon. It only takes a dollar to support us. I mean, love you very much for it. And the link will be down below. And uh, with the upcoming set coming on, I was kind of worried of like what to really build. But then something popped in my head. And it's called American Gods. It's you're literally all, almost all but one of the creature is a god. And uh, it gets pretty fun. Yeah, it's just uh, basically a Jeskai control deck, and we'll see if we can get there for sure. And the first creature, of course, the first god is Heliod's Sun's Crown. It's a 3 drop, 2 and a white, 5-5 five, five indestructible. As long as your devotion of Y is less than 5, it is not a creature. But whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And if it makes any better, you can pay 1 and a white. Another target creature gains life link until end of turn. So therefore, that solves that problem yeah and if you get him you just get to be like hey lifelink 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 gain some life counter 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 and hopefully he gets the swing as well next up is god eternal kefnet it is two blue and two for a four or five zombie god with flying you may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery card this way copy that card and you may cast that copy the copy costs two less to cast yep and then whenever he dies or is put into the exile from the battlefield, you may put it third from the top, essentially. Yeah, that's what those zombie gods can do. And the key word is when it gets put into exile. So, like, a lot of lot of black kill is just all exile nowadays or white enchantment control. And when they're like, so I'll clave, conclave tribunal your thing, you're like, cool, I'll just put it on third from my deck. Yeah, thanks. thanks. I get it back in a few, few turns. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, it's a control deck. So all your stuff is board wipe. So when you only have to pay two or three for a board wipe, it's pretty good. Yeah, and you're already waiting to play these dudes, so you might as well just wait some more. Yeah, no matter what, your gods are indestructible or they return. So you don't yeah. care about board wiping. The next one is Thassa's Deep Dwelling. It's a three and a blue, six, five, indestructible. It has the same god clause as it has to have devotion of five. But at the beginning of your end set, exile one other target creature you control, then return to the battlefield under your control. Now this mostly doesn't really have any value but to untap your dudes at, while you swing with them because a god just to be able to do that is enough but she has another ability which is amazing is pay three and a blue tap another target creature yeah that's yeah sometimes at the end of turn you just gotta tap their dudes and then one of the best zombie gods that they made was god yeah. eternal oketra it is two white and three for a three six with double strike when you cast a creature spell create a four four black zombie warrior token with vigilance <laughs> awesome sure and then he's got the same clause that whenever it dies or is exiled, you put it third from the top. Yeah. And this card, if it gets to stay in play, you get to take the game pretty quickly. Because yeah. you're just like, I get to overpower you with dudes that you can't deal with. Because every god you play becomes that god and a 4-4 dude. With Vigilance. Yeah. They don't add to any devotion or anything, which is sad. Mm -hmm. But you still get a 4-4 dude that can be like, hey, I'm going to kill you now. Yeah, exactly. I... I I completely forgot about this card and then I played it against an arena. I was like, oh, I can't win. Ever. Thanks. Uh, Alright, this no the next one is Irhog, the Raise Boar. Three, two red, six, six, boar god. It has trample, which is nice, but whenever it attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand on the battlefield tapped and attacking. Return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next hand step. And of course it has the claws of it coming back third from the top. And this just has your other gods just come in and start swinging. If you swing, plop this down, have God Eternal Ketra come out and swing too, and then on your second main you play a creature spell, a god. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Like, he's just amazing, fun little dude. Next up is Perforos the Bronze Blooded. He is a red and four for a 7 6 indestructible god. He's got Devotion to Red, so you have to have five. Um, and then other creatures you control have haste. And then you can pay a red and two, put a red creature card. Or an artifact creature card from your hand into the battlefield, sacrifice at the beginning of the next insta. So, yeah, just while you're, he, he's there to give your dudes haste, and he's gone. And I just realized with uh, Thassa and uh, Ilharg that it, the effects still work. So you plop a dude from the boar, and then Thassa bounces it. Yeah, and blinks it. So you get to keep it. Just like uh, Perforos and all that fun stuff. Now, the next one, of course, isn't a god, but it's a nice little board wall, right? Wipe. Is a realm cloak giant. It's a five and two white, seven seven vigilance. But it has an adventure. It's called uh, Cast Off. 
It's three and two white, so five. Destroy all nine giant creatures. So, there you go. Just board wipes. Board That's wipes. What we're doing. That's all you need Kill to kill the world. That's all you need to happen for sure. Next up is Banishing Light. It is one white and two for an enchantment. Whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. So you get rid of their pesky planeswalkers or whatever, their gods if they have them because they're indestructible. So you're yeah. like, cool, get out of here. Done. And it adds devotion for white. Yeah, it works. Next one is Gideon Blackblade. It's one and two white, but it's a four loyalty. So as long as it's your turn, he becomes a four four soldier and still with indestructible, still planeswalker. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to him, so he literally is unkillable. During your turn. During your turn. Plus one, uh, up to another target creature you control gains uh, Vigilance, Lifelink, or Indestructible. And then minus six, Exile, target non-land permanent, which is awfully forgotten because he's so good. Yeah, you really just want to plus him a lot. Yeah. Because he just, he helps you so much. Oh yeah. Next up, Narset, Parter of Veil. She is two blue and one for five devotion, or five, five loyalty walker. Uh, each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn, and you minus two look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library. So she helps you dig, and she yep. keeps them from drawing extra, and she gives you devotion to blue, which is really what we're wanting. Exactly. It's all about just trying to get those board wipes and try to clear the path for, so for sure. She, I think, is kind of the weakest link, maybe, of the deck, but and also... A mainstay of like net decks and whatnot but i thought i'd use her the next one is someone who forgot uh chandra fire artisan two and two red it's a four drop planeswalker when one or more loyalty counters are removed from chandra uh, deal that much damage to target opponent or planeswalker that's a key and then plus one exile the top card of your library you may play it until in the turn and then minus seven you basically exile seven deal seven damage and then you get to play those cards until in your turn so I just thought it, I, we need some extra card draw. That's why Narsa and Chandra are both in there. You know, hopefully you get through the deck really quickly. Yeah. You got to dig deep. Oh, yeah. Next up is Outlaw's Merry Mint. It is a red, two white, and one for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one at random. Create a red and white creature token with one of these characteristics. Yep. Three, one human warrior with trample and haste. A two, one cleric with lifelink and haste. Or a 1-2 human rogue with haste, and when this creature enters the battlefield, it does 1 damage to any target. So yes, you're not sure what you're going to get, but you're going to get something that yep. can help you. And either way, it has haste, so it gets to do something. Yep. And you need always humans for your gods to worship, and this is a perfect way to also board wipe and just keep pummeling the and opponent. And keep having pressure. Yeah. And the next one is uh, Shatter the Sky. It's one of the best board wipes they've printed in a long time. It's 2-2 two two white. Each creature who controls a creature with four or greater draws a card, destroy all creatures, and hopefully you'll be drawing cards off your gods and not caring. And therefore, that will actually get you to the gods quicker. So, yeah. there you go. Next up is Elspeth Conquers Death. It is two white and three for a uh, saga, and the first saga is exile target permanent and opponent controls with convert mana cost three or greater. Number two, non-creature spells your opponent casts cost two more to play this turn, or until your next turn. And then minus th or the third saga is return target creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a one one counter on it or low to counter on it. Yeah, this is one of the best cards in standard right now. I feel like just to be able to get rid of whatever you want and then the stuff that they just killed or your planeswalkers that just killed off, just get them back. Yeah, simple as that. Now the next one, of course, is an old planeswalker that it's been a while since we've seen them. Is Ral? Is it Viceroy? It's three blue and a red, five loyalty. Plus one. Look at the top card. Two cards of your library. Put one on the bottom, and, or one in the graveyard, and one in your hand, which is really nice. Minus three. Deal damage to equal to target creature uh, with a number of uh, instance or sorcery cards in your graveyard from the game, or exile, or your graveyard. Yeah, sorry. And then minus eight. You get an emblem, which is a game winner. You cast a, a instant or sorcery spell. You deal four damage, and you draw two cards. Yeah. To any target. So you're so, just like, cool. Play this dude. Take four. Yeah. Take four. Just take four. And if you don't win with gods, you get to win Planeswalkers with this dude, yep. Sarkon the Masterless. He is two red and three for a five loyalty walker. Whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. Plus one. Dealing the turn, each Planeswalker you control becomes a 4-4 four, four red dragon and gains flying. Yep. Minus three, create a 4-4 four, four red dragon token with flying. Simple as that. I know uh, this deck is very a uh, mainstay of an old archetype. But with the gods and like, 
Of course, I always try to stay away from super powerful cards everyone's using, and that's why Fiery Convention or whatever's not in there, and also uh, the blue white planeswalker that I don't want. Teferi. Yeah. Get him out of there. Don't want to use that guy. That's that's how you build around for sure. And then uh, last but not least is Time White. It's a two two white and blue. Return a creature you control to the owner's hand, then destroy all creatures. Simple as that. And of course, uh, if you get this from with the blue god Kefnet, then it costs three, two white and blue. It's pretty good. Yeah, pretty super solid. With that, that is the deck. Uh, it does have 24 lands, so of course I'm testing it out and I'm liking it a lot more with uh, four favorable passages and then a bunch of basics. But then all the other multicolored cards are like shocklands. So we have Hollow Fountain, which is the blue white. We have the Sacred Foundry, which is the red white, and the Steam Vents, which is red blue. And I feel like this just helps it out and makes it a lot cleaner and faster. Yeah. S especially early game when you just need to build up to your higher power stuff. Yeah, because you're really wanting to make sure you have your mana on the turn you needed to board wipe, so that way you don't just die. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just getting so <clears throat> tired of temples. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh, with that, that is the deck. The deck list will be down below. Hopefully, I'll be able to show this off with Arena so you can see if, you know, gods just stay there forever and board wipe all the time. But with that, hopefully you enjoyed your stay here at Geetopia Island. You have a good day. Bye. Later. Also, guys, I just remind y'all to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and if you want to keep up to date on all our future content, make sure you click that bell. It'll give you all the notifications you need. With that, we'd like to go ahead and give a big thank you to all our fans that support us through the year, and especially our Patreon support people. Uh, we do like to give a shout-out to our Mythic and Above uh, supporters, and that would be Dwayne Higgs. Thank, thank you very you much. much. We love you.